But we begin with that water crisis affecting a good portion of Oakland County. A water main break has more than 300,000 people under a boil water advisory tonight. And we're told it could be days before things are finally back to normal. A dozen communities, including Farmington Hills and Bloomfield Township, are under that advisory. And some residents living in places like Novi and Walled Lake have no water at all. As you can imagine, stores have been flooded with people trying to get bottled water. Take a look at this craziness, right? This is inside Costco in Livonia. People have packed their carts with water. The aisles are packed with people with water, all trying to get cases of water out of that store. Then at the Kroger in Birmingham, the store has been wiped completely clean of all the bottled water in stock. Our team of reporters are continuing to stay on top of every angle of this breaking story for you, but we're going to begin with our Amira David. She's live in West Bloomfield right now with how the boil water advisory is impacting hospitals. Amira. That's right, Carolyn. Right now I am at Henry Ford in West Bloomfield, where earlier today this hospital was forced to tap into its crisis contingency plan, pumping in thousands of gallons of sanitized water. Water is used not only for drinking for staff and team members but it's and patients, but it's a part of the um, system of medical uh, care. A top Henry Ford health official talking to Channel 7 about the importance of water in the wake of a massive water main break. The hospital's West Bloomfield location has been forced to pump in over 5,000 gallons of sanitized water, allowing it to maintain most of its usual operations. But today it did take some serious precautions, transferring 15 critically ill patients to its Detroit location. C-sections for today and Wednesday were also rescheduled or moved to different hospitals and all ambulance traffic has been diverted elsewhere. Providence Park in Novi also affected relied on similar measures. Our camera found their staff moving in large buckets of water to manually flush out the toilets while bringing in several gallons of bottled water. And they say four patients on dialysis treatment had to be transferred out immediately. The dialysis machine requires a direct hookup to a water um, source, and obviously we can't do that. And those four patients, we are told, did ultimately transfer to Providence over in Southfield. Uh, but we do want to take this time to remind you that even though the ambulance traffic has been diverted elsewhere, the emergency room is still very much up and running and they are welcoming any walk-ins. They want people to know today that they are trained to handle these exact kinds of scenarios and that they are well equipped to continue to provide services to those residents who may live in the area. For now, in West Bloomfield, Amira David, 7 Action News. Certainly good to know, Amira, because so many people need help right now. Well, we caught up with a witness who found himself in the middle of the crisis soon after the water main ruptured. He was headed to the store to pick up some last minute groceries last night and ran into a traffic jam on 14 Mile. As I pulled up, the water was getting deeper and deeper, and it was literally sprouting through the different cracks in the streets. You could see it breaking through and then new little geysers like popping up and splashing water everywhere. I was impressed with the power of the water because it was popping. It was like you could see it buckling the, the concrete underneath where the cars were driving. He says he slowly made his way through it with the water about halfway up the wheel of his car, but thankfully he's OK. And now we're learning water service could be restored to some of the 12 communities sooner than others. That's because some have well water as a backup and some can get water rerouted. Seven investigator Jim Kirshner is live downtown with which communities it's likely to impact. Jim? Carolyn, it's called redundancy in the system. Let me show you the map they gave us of the affected area. Over here on the west is Wixom. They have a well that's available, but that, of course, has to meet water quality standards. Then right next to it, the red areas are North Novi, North Farmington Hills. They could open some valves and provide water flow to those communities. That also is going to be checked out. But the important note for everybody in all 12 of these communities in this map, the boil water advisory remains in effect until further notice. It's typically you have redundancy in certain areas. Now in this particular area, we're looking at the far western portion of our system and uh, it does not have that redundancy flexibility that may be uh, on the internal uh, side. This map shows the area affected by the water main break. The areas in yellow have low water pressure, about 300,000 people. The areas in red, no water, about 51,000 people. The areas in green have water. The work today on the site of the break on 14 Mile is to drain and dig. 
down six to 10 feet to the break. The 48 inch main has 20 foot long sections. They've ordered three to start the fix tomorrow. In the meantime, some water flow can be rerouted. As of now, we have been able to restore some water pressure uh, within uh, the impacted communities. Um, so much so that some of them are going to begin to engage with their own water quality testing. The cause of the break is not yet known. There is some speculation that a pumping station on the grid had a sudden drop in power, causing the pressure on the main to drop. The, the only thing I know is that there was a power interruption. That facility um, uh, did not have power. Once the power was reestablished, then the pumps were uh, turned on. So the power was off and then a possible surge. That's part of this investigation. The boil water alert remains in effect. The repairs are going to start tomorrow. Then they say even after the damaged section is fixed, 48 hours to run the water and test it to make sure the water quality is clear for everybody involved. At this point, they hope to have everybody restored by Friday night. Carolyn, Stephen. I know, people are going, woo, till Friday. So Jim, do we know how old that water main is and, and how much is it gonna cost to fix all of this? They said it was installed in 1970. This system has had no breaks as far as maintenance. We were asked that. There's not really any maintenance, they say, that can be done, but there's new technology that allows them to put a device inside the water main while it's still functioning to look for any issues. That's gonna be started as far as the cost, can't put a dollar figure on this yet. I know they're going to be working around the clock. Thank you so much, Jim, for the update on all of that. Okay. Steven. Yeah, you know they're going to hope that something else doesn't break on this thing. With the boil water advisory, one of a lot of questions you need to know about what you can do and cannot do with your tap water. So here are the answers to some of those questions. Is it safe to shower? Well, yes, unless you have an open wound, which could let bacteria into your body. Is it safe to brush your teeth? Well, you should not be using the water from your faucet for that. You should use boiled water that has been cooled or, as always, bottled water. What about washing the dishes in a dishwasher or by hand? Well, it's recommended you use heat in the dry washer right there if you're gonna do it that way, or hand washing, pour hot boiled water over those dishes. For additional information about what to do during a boil advisor, you find it all right now on the homepage at WXYZ.com. We also find an updated list of schools that will be closed tomorrow because of all this. Well, water is 